You are listening to Radio Alamundi. Hi there, wherever you are. I'm Marco Rixeker, a freelance writer, reporter, producer, teacher, translator, tour guide, poet, singer, and songwriter. I speak several languages, and I'm the creator and founder of Radio Alamundi, an evolving podcast station where no language and all languages are spoken. It's a multilingual mix of music, poetry, lectures, languages, interviews, documentaries, recipes, and a lot more, co-produced with the students of the Alamandi International Cultural Center. You can find us on radioalamandi.bandcamp.com, podcasts.apple.com, Spotify, YouTube, Breaker, Player FM, Facebook. Search Radio Alamandi. Jorge Munoz is a more recent arrival in the culinary mosaic of Peruvian cuisine. As part of some research on Peruvian gourmet cooking, I'd find an inevitable reference. As Street y Gaston, a world-famous restaurant in Lima, Peru. Anyone, anywhere in the world can find their webpage. http colon double slash en dot Astrid e. Gaston.com. that is spelled E-N dot A-S-T-R-I-D-Y-G-A-S-T-O-N dot com. So, the following narrative is part of a collection of testimonies entitled Deliciously Addictive, Sampling and Savoring 5,000 Years of Peruvian Cuisine Anywhere in the World, and also Let's talk about it anywhere in the world. For it is all about people's voices, accents, and speech patterns, hand in hand with my own personal anecdotes and observations. In addition to that, locals and travelers will be allowed to introduce themselves in their respective, often indigenous languages and dialects, and to speak their minds freely, without any paraphrases or expectations. So let the story go on from there. And so that's what I do one day, looking up fancy menus and mission statements, but also contact page. So I go right ahead and just send out sort of a general interview request. Less than 24 hours later, I get a response from the woman in charge of media relations. She asks me if I'd be interested in speaking with their new chef, a young Peruvian gourmet cook by the name of Jorge Munoz. So I go for it, and as a result, I'm given Jorge's email address to set up an online interview. The next thing I do is get in touch with Luis de Leon, a journalist in Lima, asking him if he's interested in taking part in the online conversation with Jorge Munoz. The idea is based on our common journeys across Peru to meet and interview all kinds of interesting characters about the topic of traditional Peruvian cooking. Obviously, Luis is more than happy to accept the invitation, and I know that he is going to add his approaches and angles to this interview project. Luis is quite critical of a younger generation of Peruvian chefs who have introduced so-called fusion into Peruvian cuisine, frequently at the expense of old and ancient traditions. Eventually a time and date are set up, while we're also having to take into account international time zones. It'll be late in the morning in Lima and mid-afternoon at my location in the world. And it is fortunate that Jorge Munoz is open to all those ideas and willing to take the time necessary to answer all the questions. His words make Peruvian cuisine sound like poetry and have the power to make you hungry. That's precisely what is happening to Luis and me in the course of our conversation with Jorge Munoz, who is originally from northern Peru. But he has lived abroad for about 20 years. Now that he's back in the country, 
His focus is to reinstate ancient crops, produce, and ingredients from his home region, promote their eco-friendly and sustainable cultivation, and put them on the table weaved into gourmet dishes. Many of those components are unknown outside Peru and might not even have a name in English. In spite of such serious topics, our conversation includes a lot of laughter and frequently turns into a lively and friendly debate about all kinds of issues surrounding Peruvian cuisine. In addition to that, I challenge Jorge with some provocative questions in order to trigger a reaction as part of which he is supposed to imagine and invent all kinds of recipes for all kinds of situations anytime, anywhere in the world. For example, to me, poetry and cuisine go well together, just like wine and cheese. Doing things spontaneously, I send Jorge Munoz a text during our conversation. It is a poem written by the old Chinese hedonist Li Bao, also known as Li Bai, Li Bo, or Li Po, who loved to indulge in pleasures like food and drink. In this case, the image conveyed is that of a boat gently drifting down a river under the full moon while enjoying some wine before sailing on along a river of stars. The Spanish translation sticks to the real expression, Via Lactea, the Milky Way. But that doesn't bother Jorge Munoz at all when he gives an online reading performance of Lee Bauer's poem. What follows is a discussion between him and me about the sort of wine he would like to enjoy under similar circumstances. Hola, eh, soy Jorge Muñoz. Libación solitaria bajo, bajo la luna, rodeado de flores ante un jarro de vino, libo solo, sin compañera. Alzo la copa y convido a la luna. Ella, mi sombra y yo, venimos a ser tres amigos. Aunque la luna no puede beber, y mi sombra en vano sigue a mi persona, les tomo por transitorias compañías. Divirtámonos, amigas, antes de que pase la primavera. Canto mientras la luna pasea, bailo mientras mi sombra vacila. Antes de mi embriaguez nos entenderemos juntos. Y cuanto estoy ebrio, se deshace nuestra compañía. Oh luna, serás mi inmortal amiga. Nos veremos a menudo a través de la Vía Láctea. Lipo. ¿Cuál es el vino peruano que recomendarías, o sea, tal vez tomarías tú, para una libación solitaria bajo la luna? No tomaría vino, me tomaría un buen pisco, una ah, buena entonces... uva, que al fin y al cabo es casi un vino. <risa> el pisco que tomaría sería definitivamente un pisco de una, uva, de una negra criolla, que es un tipo de uva oriunda de aquí del, de, de Perú, y la cual compartimos con, eh, con España. En el, en, 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 en Jorge Muñoz rather have some pisco made with a grape variety called Negra Criolla, which is cultivated in Peru and originally comes from Spain. To Jorge, this would be the best way to celebrate and enjoy solitude under the moon, which is mentioned in the poem. One of the key features of Peruvian cuisine is its historic ability to adopt culinary traditions from all over the world. It has contributed to its international success as the best gourmet secret and to the successful careers of chefs like Jorge Muñoz, one of the few Peruvians to have been awarded a Michelin star while he was in charge of cooking at a restaurant in Barcelona. That's why he would have no trouble matching some of the seafood dishes with the French Chablis wine, for example. Mira, yo ahorita mismo este, te, les comenté ¿no? que estoy con, la, con lo del ají y con lo, de, con lo de la pesca azul, pero ahora 
que comenzamos a hablar que el tema este de qué, se, qué sucedería ¿no? si tuviéramos esta facilidad so, de tener So, the morning of our online interview, Jorge Muñoz can imagine a fish dish with some ají mochero, a hot pepper from northern Peru, and some vinegar. And with that, he would serve a Chablis, which would make it a perfect Franco-Peruvian combo. Luis jokes that he is about to eat his microphone with all those hints and illusions, and then asks Jorge Muñoz what sort of a dish he could whip up for two hungry travelers who have just arrived in Lima. Jorge would offer us some clams from Tacna in southern Peru, which would have to be very fresh and should just have opened. Then he just squeezed some fresh lemon juice over them and served them with a Pisco cocktail called Chilcano, which causes Luis to exclaim, Santo Dios, my God, this is torture for me, before he suggests another popular seafood dish in Peru especially in the Lima area, by the name of Choritos a la Chalaca, or Callao style mussels. At the same time, Jorge Muñoz hasn't lost touch with his home region. Just the fact of mentioning a local ají pepper, which is native to the Trujillo area of northern Peru, brings back childhood memories. <laughs> a mí la última vez que una aquí me hizo llorar y no fue por porque picara, sino fue por la emoción de probarlo otra vez. Y fue una aquí mochero en la en la campiña de moche en Trujillo. At the same time, Jorge Muñoz hasn't lost touch with his home region. Just the fact of mentioning a local ají pepper, which is native to the Trujillo area of northern Peru, brings back childhood memories. So Jorge Muñoz has spent the bulk of his life outside Peru, his home country, going to school and college in different places. And even if he has never really lost touch with his home region of northern Peru, he would never have thought that one day he would be a young chef of renown and end up working in a world-famous gourmet restaurant in Lima, Astrid y Gaston. Needless to say that a visit to a gourmet restaurant can put a serious dent in your budget. That simple fact inspires one of my questions for Jorge Muñoz. Jorge Muñoz, ¿qué podría comer yo en tu restaurante por un dólar? What could I order for one dollar in your restaurant? Por un dólar. Un dólar son <laughs> ahora mismo, son tres, tres soles eh, con cincuenta. Te podrías comer una almeja del sur. Uf, una, una almeja súper, súper fresca. Que no Jorge has de... taken him back a little bit and pauses for a while. But then a little delicacy comes alive through his voice. A clam, originally from southern Peru, simply prepared with some lemon juice, ají peppers and coriander. And simplicity is what it's all about. Vamos a tener un producto súper marino en el cual... Tenemos la característica de este mar tan preciado que tenemos que ser el Océano Pacífico, ¿no? Peru is well known for its archaeological treasures. Beyond world famous destinations like Cusco and Machu Picchu, there is a vast amount of ancient sites in northern Peru, especially in the Lambayeque region, where a king or high dignitary, now referred to as the Lord of Sipan, El Señor de Sipan, once ruled. Yo cocinaría, ¿sabes qué? Una, un, un, buen, un buen estofado de, 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 de legumbres. Uh, eh, hay un que me encanta And Jorge Muñoz would make a nice vegetable stew for such a ruler or king. There is a vegetable from northern Peru called oyuco. And one of the dishes Jorge loves to make is a stew with that vegetable, which he would serve with steamed fish. In a later online conversation, Luis and I are going to debrief this session with Jorge Muñoz. Our unanimous conclusion is that it was a fun experience altogether. 
And it came a bit as a surprise to learn that Jorge Munoz is such a strong defender of ancient culinary traditions. Both Luis and I feel extremely hungry after the interview with Jorge Munoz and yearn for exactly the kind of soul food, so to speak, that fills you up. And we also know that it is going to take a long time until we can accept Jorge Munoz's invitation to share a gourmet meal in the Miraflores district of Lima, which is where his workplace, as Tridi Gaston, is located. So, Louis is going to have a late lunch after work, and I'm going to meet some friends to indulge in another culinary delight, quite similar to some typical Peruvian dishes. It's an Iraqi barbecue combo with a variety of meats, sausages, semolina, salads, and sauces. It's a delicious mosaic of spices and peppers with which a French Côte du Rhône wine goes perfectly well. And I come to the conclusion that this is as close as it can get that evening to a Peruvian barbecue, as part of which grilled chicken, anticuchos, and pork would be served with potatoes, corn, sweet potatoes, salads, and the inevitable spicy ahi sauces. Now, there are still a few open questions. Chief among them, who is Jorge Munoz? What is he doing at the time of our online interview session? Eh, hola, me llamo Jorge Munoz, uh, tengo 34 años, soy cocinero, Peruano, actualmente soy el chef del restaurante Astrid Gaston en Lima, Perú. So Jorge Munoz is a 34-year-old Peruvian chef at the Astrid y Gaston restaurant in Lima, Peru, where it is 11.20 in the morning, South American Standard Time, when he talks with Luis and me. Going on from there, I continue to ask questions about his background. Jorge Munoz was born in the city of Trujillo in northern Peru, but he grew up near Pacasmayo, which is about one hour from Trujillo. He never worked or went to school in Peru. He left the country in 2000 to study abroad and eventually earned a degree in hotel management. That immersed him in the world of cooking and allowed him to make dishes based on his childhood memories of his home region in northern Peru. And as a citizen of the world, he has learned to respect produce and sustainability. Jorge Munoz's comments inspire my friend Luis Desa Leon to ask him a question about what he is doing at the time of the online conversation. Uh, Luis, te escuchamos. Hola, Jorge. Hola, Mira, yo, yo quisiera saber... Jorge Munoz is preparing some ají mochero, a hot pepper from the Trujillo area in northern Peru, but he can smell the aroma of a Peruvian bluefish, which is pretty strong. And how could you prepare such a dish at home, no matter where you are in the world? Those are questions Luis and I end up asking Jorge Munoz during our online interview. Luis starts things off with the initial question. Hola Jorge, soy Luis Deza, soy periodista de Lima, Perú. ¿Cuál es la receta peruana que se podría preparar en cualquier Hello, Jorge. parte del mundo? I'm Luis Deza. I'm a journalist in Lima, Peru. Which Peruvian recipe could people prepare anywhere in the world? Yo creo que sí necesitamos eh, nuestra base que son los ajíes, si es que vamos a preparar algún guiso. Creo que con un buen ají amarillo. Personally, I'd make a stew with Peruvian ají peppers, especially a hot sauce made with yellow ají peppers. Sí, pero por ejemplo, aquí estoy en Francia en este momento. Yes, but here in France, which is where I'm right now, it is next to impossible to find Peruvian ají peppers. Yo lo que haría es pues encontrar algo Algo que sea, eh, In that case, I would try to make a spicy dish. So, I would use lemons, fresh fish, and olive oil, which I'm sure you can find in Strasbourg, France, and anywhere else in the world. And I would use them to make a tiradito, a Peruvian fish carpaccio. 
and I would make it with a few drops of French lemon juice, a little bit of French olive oil, and then I would slice up a local hot pepper. Its spiciness would allow you to feel like you're in Peru. That way, you'd enjoy some Peruvian flavors. And if you could find some coriander, that would be even better. I think it would be a great combination of flavors. Acid, oceanic, spicy. And that would take you into the world of Peruvian no sé, cooking. Te traslada al mundo de la cocina peruana. As an international chef, Jorge Munoz knows all about Peruvian cooking anywhere in the world. As part of his professional career and experience, he has developed and given a personal touch to a traditional Peruvian dish from the Pacific coast, which could also be made with a sweet water fish, by the way. In that case, you might imagine you're sitting at the shores of Lake Titicaca. Why not, after all? Anyway, it seems that hot peppers and the hot pepper sauce would be the most important ingredients that would give Tierra Dito its distinct Peruvian touch. Olive oil would give it a Mediterranean touch. And homemade extra virgin olive oil can be found in Peru. In all likelihood, it would come from sort of a Mediterranean enclave south of Lima, such as the Chincha area and the Ica region. So Jorge Munoz's personal recipe makes sense as being totally and traditionally Peruvian and easy to make, no matter where you are in the world. Jorge Munoz, Jorge Munoz. ¿Cómo se hace un how can we make a tiradito? Eh, un tiradito es un pescado blanco o, o azul. El depende mm. de tiradito is based on either an oily fish or a white fish. It depends on what you like and it is sliced like sashimi, or usuzukuri, which is a much thinner cut than regular sashimi. And then, you sprinkle some salt and squeeze a lemon over it. Finally, you add Peruvian ahi peppers and some coriander. And, as far as I'm concerned, my homemade tiradito is made with fish. Then, I use olive oil, some fried garlic, and lemon juice. That's my tiradito special. My homemade tiradito. Postscript. A few months before the online session with Luis and Jorge Munoz, I do another interview with an American writer by the name of Holly George Warren. The bulk of our online conversation is about her recent biography of Janis Joplin, but we also discuss other topics such as her location in the Catskill Mountains of upstate New York and her visit to Peru a couple of years earlier. When she mentions the latter, I spontaneously ask her about the recipe for her favorite Peruvian dish. With her openness and straightforwardness, she sort of improvises the recipe for a potato dish based on distant memory. I tell Jorge Munoz about Holly George Warren's improvised dish, and he is going to give it an extra colorful and exotic Peruvian touch. Holly George Warren, what is the recipe for your favorite Peruvian dish? Oh boy, that's hard. <laughs> I, I, because I am, I don't think I have the skills or the knowledge that I could really properly answer that question. I definitely remember um, the purple potatoes that were quite different from our potatoes, you know, the typical kind of um, Irish potatoes or Idaho potatoes or whatever you want to call them, or red potatoes. So um, I would like to experiment with those purple potatoes because they, I remember they had a quite different consistency. Maybe try um, slicing them up and sautéing them with a little um, chopped onion and garlic and some nice olive oil, something like that. Jorge Muñoz comments. Bueno, es uh, la combinación de papa con cebolla y aceite es, es increíble. Yo ahí le puedo, well, yo, ahí el, the combination uh, between potatoes, onions, and olive oil is just incredible. But I would add more garlic and a Peruvian huacatay sauce, a spicy and tasty cream sauce from the Andean highlands. Then, I would mash the potatoes and stir-fry them. 
So you get a dish that combines simplicity with lots of flavors.